Hello and welcome to the Module 2 Skills video. In this module, we're going to continue working on the Riverview database from the tutorials in that we will build this database and define table relationships. So first off, if you recall, tutorial 1, you designed a table in Datasheet View. Well, from here on out, we're going to build our tables using Design View. So the first thing we're going to do is create a new table in Design View. So whenever we create database objects, we're going to click on our Create tab. And we have all of our objects listed here. So to create a table in Design View, simply click Table Design. And this opens up our table design grid. So from here we can add field names, select data types for those fields, and include an optional description. The table we're going to be creating is going to be an invoice table and it will relate to the existing visit table. So we're going to first start by adding our field names. And the first field that we will create will be invoice num. So I'm going to type in invoice num. And once I've typed it in, I can hit tab and it moves me over to the data type selection. For this field, we will set it as a short text. Now if you look below here, the field has several properties we can select. First off, with short text, we have a field size. And as I'd mentioned in the concepts video, with short text, it defaults to 255. So thinking economy and space storage, we're going to change this field size from 255 to 5. Now if we go down further, we have a caption property. And we're going to include a caption property for this of invoice num. Now as you recall, when we create our field names, we're going to use camel casing. So if the field name includes two words, we'll make sure that we have no spaces between the words and capitalize the first letter of each word. With the caption, we can separate those words, and this is what we'll show at the top of our data sheet as well as labels on a form. So I'm going to type in invoice num with a space. Now next to it is the description, and this is optional, and database users will never see this particular item. But, as a database developer, you can include notes or a description of the field itself. So, if you ever have to come back and work on the table, you'll know what it is. So, this is going to be our primary key for the table. So, I'll type in primary key. Since it's a primary key, I should go ahead and set that. So, to set a field as a primary key, all you need to do is come over here to this gray bar to the left and select the entire field. And up here on the ribbon, there's a primary key button. And as soon as you press it, that sets the field as the primary key. So continuing, I'm going to add a few more fields here. The next one will be visit ID. Because again, this is going to relate to the visit table. So this will be the foreign key in the invoice table. So I'm going to tab over. And this too will be a short text data type. And I want to change the field size again from 255 to 4. I'm also going to add a caption because, again, it's a camel cased word. And I want to separate out those words. So I'll type in visit with the space and ID. And for a description, so again, I know what it is. I'm going to type in foreign key. Continuing, I'll add another field name of invoice amount. And again, camel cased wording. Invoice amount, that would indicate that this is going to contain dollar amount. So for the data type, if we select on the drop down, here are all of our options. We're going to select currency for this one. And we'll leave all of the formatting and other properties the same, with the exception of caption. We'll go ahead and type in a caption of invoice amount. And over here, I will set the decimal places, however, from auto, I'll set those to two. 
And the next field we'll move on to will be invoice date. And as the name implies, this will be a date field. So we need to change the data type to date time. And we'll give it a caption of invoice date. And we'll apply a specific format to it. Now, when you come to the format property, you'll notice there's a drop down arrow. And if you click on it, it will show you all of the preset formats that you can apply to the field. In this case, you're not limited to just these formats. So if you want to specify a custom format, say for example, you want the month to show two places, the date two places, and the year two places, you'll notice that there are no preset formats such as that, but you can create it yourself by simply typing in mm forward slash dd for day forward slash yy for year. So at this point, every date that will go into this field will show like this. So if it's January 1st, 2017, it'll show 010117. Moving on to our next field, we are going to make this one invoice paid. And this will indicate, of course, that the invoice was paid or not. So this data type will be a yes, no. So selecting yes, no, we will add the caption of invoice paid. Again, separating out the words. And at this point, our table is finished. So to save the table, click on the save icon at the top. And at this point, we can name our table. And this table will be named billing. And there we go. We have all of our fields for our table. We've saved our table. And we set our primary key. Now, during the course of having designed a table, if you decide, well, I want to move a field from its current location to another spot, well, that's very easy to do. Just select the field over here using the gray bar, and then hold down on the mouse button, and then move the field. So, for example, if I want to move invoice amount below invoice date, I simply would click on the bar and then click once more until I have that square icon under the arrow and then I can select the new position for the field. So if I want to place it below invoice date, I look for that solid black line which indicates where the field will be moved to. And then I let go of the mouse button and invoice amount has now been moved to its new location. Now I found along the way when designing a table, I may have forgotten a field and I need to add it into the table. So there's two ways of going about this. I could come over to the very bottom, put in the new field, and if it's not in the position that I want, move it as well. Or alternatively, I can simply insert a new row in the location that I want it to be located and then place that empty row there and create the new field. For example, I want to add a new field called invoice item and I want it to appear above invoice page. To do this, I simply select the field where I want it to show above. So I would select Invoice Paid, and from there right-click the field and select Insert Rows. And now an empty row is positioned above Invoice Paid and I can create my new field. So Invoice Item will be my new field. I'll leave it as short text and change the field size from 255 to 40. Again, when you add fields that are short text, you definitely want to resize them. As I'd mentioned in the concepts video, leaving them at 255 reserves that much space in memory. And if a value is not going to take up the whole 255, you'll waste hard disk space. So we'll set that at 40. And I will set the caption for this as well, separating out the two words. And there we go. To demonstrate what our table looks like in Datasheet View to show the captions, I will save the table and switch to Datasheet View. And as you notice here, our captions now show at the top. The field names 
still remain as one word. However, what a person will see for a column heading will be more user-friendly, easier to read. Now that our billing table is complete, we will need to go back in and change a few of the field properties for the visit table. Moving back to design view, as you recall, we have visit ID, which will be the foreign key from the visit table. Right now it's set to a field size of four. We haven't made any adjustments to the visit table as of yet, so we'll need to jump over there and change some of those field sizes. So I'll close the billing table, and I'm going to right click the visit table and open it in design view. So our visit ID, which was created in the previous video, has a default field size of 255. So we're going to need to change that to 4. While I'm at it, I'll add the description of primary key. And complete it by setting some additional format. So visit date, I will change to a short date format. Reason, I'll change the field size from 255 to 60. And at this point, my changes are ready to put into play. So first thing I'm going to need to do will be to save the table. I'm saving the structure of it. And whenever you change a field property, you'll get this message that some data may be lost. I already know that the visit IDs within the table are only four in length, so I'm not going to lose any data by doing this, so I'll select yes. And just to ensure, I'll change over to data sheet view, and I'll see that I still have the 75 records I originally had. In addition, by changing the visit date to a short date format, it now appears as this, where the months will be exactly how many digits are in the month, same as the date, and then the full year. Now we'll move on to adding records to tables using import functions. So back in our billing table, I've entered four new records. If you recall, setting up the invoice date format, we set up a custom format of month, month, day, day, year, year, and upon entering them, you see that the format is held. Again, we talked about how to resize the fields in a table so we can view all of the contents within it simply by clicking on the table selector or record selector. And once everything is highlighted, we can just simply position our cursor between two fields and double click. And now we're able to see all of the information or all the field values in the table itself. We're going to import records into the table in our database. So the first thing we're going to do is close out the billing table. And we're going to save our changes because we actually resized our table. So whenever you resize the fields in a table, you're going to be asked to save those changes. So you want to select yes. Now we're going to import in records into the billing table using an Excel file. So to import records, you're going to select the external data tab. And then look for the import group. We want to import Excel. And from here, we will browse to those records. In my module folder, I have an invoices spreadsheet. This contains the records that I want to import into the billing table. So once I select it, click Open. I want to append a copy of the records to the table. Not import the source data. You want to append the copy. So we're going to append it to billing. Click OK, and this first row contains column headings will be grayed out. It can already see that uh, the heading is there. I'll click Next, and then we'll just confirm that I'm going to import the billing table. Once I click Finish, you want to make sure that you do not save the import steps. And the reason is, if you save them, it's going to look for an import from the same location all the time. So unless you're doing this all the time, importing a certain spreadsheet from a specific location, you don't need to save the step. So close that out. And if we go look at our billing table now, instead of the four records that I had originally entered, there are now 204 records. So importing records, much easier than entering them. Now that we have additional records for the billing table, we're going to import the structure of a new table into this database. So we'll close the billing table. 
and we will import just the table structure of an existing table from another database using the same method that we did for importing the Excel records, except we will select Access this time. So selecting Access, I'm going to browse and it will open up into the same location and the table structure that I want is sitting in the Kelly database. So I'll select Kelly and open and I want the Import Tables, Queries, Forms, Reports, Macros, and Modules into the current database selected. I'll click OK and here's the table that I want. So I want Owner and before I click OK, I want to select Options. So once I select Options, if I leave it as is, it will pull in not only the structure of the table, but the data as well. And for this, I just want the definition. So I'll select Definition Only, and then select OK. And again, I'm not going to save the import steps for this. So I'll close this out, and now I have an Owner table. Next, we'll import a table and the data within it into our database. So once again, External Data tab, I want to select Access, and we'll browse to the All Animals database for this one. So selecting All Animals and Open. Again, Import Table selected, click OK. And this time, we'll select the Animal table. As mentioned before, when you select it, by default it will pull in both the structure and the data for the table, which we want. So we'll click OK. And we will not save the steps. And we now have the animal table in the database. Opening it up, we can see we have an animal ID, owner ID, animal name, birth date, type, and animal breed. Two more things to cover before we create the relationships between the tables in this database. First off, another field property that we can set is a default value. For instance, in our owner table, there is a state field. And the majority of owners hail from the state of West Virginia. So we can set a default value of WV for that particular field. Opening up the owner table in design view, going into the state field, we have a default value property. And for the default value, I will type in WV where states are capitalized, so I want to make sure those are capitalized as well. Because it's a short text field, Access recognizes that it is a text value and places quotation marks around it. So, if we change to data sheet view, we'll have to save the table, and you'll notice that West Virginia shows in that value. There are no records there, but Again, this is a user-friendly method of, you know, saving a user from having to do extra keystrokes. So the last thing we'll cover before moving on to creating relationships between our tables is to import data into an existing table using a text file. So closing the owner table, I will go back over to external data, and again in the import and link, I will select text file. And once again, I'll get to Browse, and I'll open up in the same spot that I had originally opened. And I'm going to import from the Owner text file. So I'll select it and click Open. And once again, we're not importing it into a new table. We're appending a copy of the records to the Owner table. So I'll change from Animal to Owner. Click OK. And the first thing it will ask is, is this a delimited file? Which it is. It's a CSV, a comma-separated value file. So I'll leave delimited checked and select Next. And Access is very good about understanding that, oh, it's a comma-separated, so comma's already set for us. We'll click Next. And then just confirming that we're importing to Owner, we'll click Finish. And once it's completed importing, we do not want to save the step, so we'll just close out of that. And from here, we open up the owner table, and 23 records have now been imported. Once again, to resize the fields to best fit, just select the table slash record selector in the corner, 
position your mouse between two fields and double click and now all the fields have been resized. So now that we have four tables within the database, let's create relationships between them. So each of our tables has a primary key and then specific tables are related to each other. Before you set a relationship between tables, you need to make sure all of the tables are closed. So I'll close the owner table and save the changes. Now that we've imported the records into the owner database, we're now ready to create relationships between the tables in our database. So to create the relationships, first thing is make sure all the tables are closed. So you want a screen that looks like this. Second, click on the database tools tab and select relationships. Your show table will open up and it will have all the tables there for you to add in. Now the way this database relates to each other, the owner table is the primary table in the database, meaning as a primary table it contains absolutely no foreign keys. So let's add that first and as you see there's just an owner ID here and then fields for the owner. The next table that we add will be the animal table. Owners have animals. So when we add animal, you'll notice there's an owner ID and an owner ID. So this is where the relationship between these tables are created. Being that it is a vet clinic, animals will have visits to the clinic. So we'll add the visit table. And as you see, there's an animal ID column over in the visit table, foreign key to the primary key. And then finally, visits are invoiced, they're billed. So we'll add the billing table. And here we see visit ID is foreign key to the visit table. Now that we have all of our tables, we can close the show table window. And I always like to resize my table so I can see all the fields that are in the table. And from here, we're ready to create the relationship. So to create a relationship between two tables, simply select the primary key in one table and hold the mouse button down, the left mouse button and then drag it over to the correct field in the related table. Owner ID to owner ID and let go of the mouse button and the edit relationships window opens. You want to make sure that you select enforce referential integrity and cascade update related fields. And once you've selected both, click create and the relationship line will then be established between the tables and you'll see a one and an infinity so this is representative of one to many so we'll do the same thing with the next table now don't fret if you make a mistake if i go and take animal id and i set it over here to reason obviously this is not the correct setup so all you need to do is select the incorrect field and you'll get a drop down arrow and from here you can select the correct field. So animal ID to animal ID. I'll enforce and I'll cascade update and create. And my next relationship is created. Finally, between the visit and billing table, I will click and hold my mouse button and drag visit ID from visit table to visit ID and billing, let go. And then once more, enforce referential integrity, cascade updates and create the relationship. At this point now, all of the tables have referential integrity enforced, meaning that I cannot add an animal into the animal table with an owner ID that doesn't exist over here. Same thing with the visit. I cannot add a visit using an animal ID that does not exist here. And same thing with billing. I cannot add a visit ID in the billing table that does not exist over here. When you're finished setting your relationship, simply close and save your changes to the layout of the relationships. So for module two skills, we've covered creating tables in design view, adding fields, setting their data type, setting their properties. And we've also seen how we can import not only data, but tables as well as tables and data and setting the relationship between the tables. So if you need to review any of the material in the video, hit the rewind button.